So that was actually a good question to segue to Stacy's presentation. Stacy um, is the team lead health promotion uh, with the Canadian Cancer Society, BC Yukon Division. She's a leader in health promotion, over 15 years of experience in both government and NGO settings. She's skilled in community development and engagement, fostering dialogue amongst communities to affect positive change. She's been working with the LGBTQ community since 2011 and feels a personal connection to the community ever since losing her 40-year-old uncle to AIDS when she was 16. So thank you and welcome. Thank you. And feel free, everybody, if you want to stand up during my presentation. I often stand when I'm working and kind of squeeze the glutes like one at a time because they actually, I'm an elite athlete, so I can tell you that they actually fall asleep when you're sitting. So stand up and give them a good squeeze. Um, <laughs> I'm also a comedian too. Just kidding. Um, so thank you for welcoming me here today and I see so many familiar faces. Um, it's my fourth year attending the summit and the last two years I was actually moderating sessions so I'm very excited to be in front of you today. I'll give you a brief overview of what I'm going to cover over the next uh, 10 minutes. I might steal some time somehow or talk very quick. Um, but a brief introduction to the Canadian Cancer Society, and I'll be sharing with you some highlights of the Get Screen program, which is out of our Ontario division. So it wasn't a program that I led, um, so I'll just be presenting on behalf of them. And then sharing my work with the society here um, that I've been doing with Gay Men's Health, including the partnerships that I've made. So who is the Canadian Cancer Society? Um, in a world of brand confusion, we're certainly not immune to it at all. Um, you probably know that there's many different cancer organizations and what makes us different. People often ask me, who are you and how are we different? Um, so we are a national community-based organization of volunteers whose mission is the eradication of cancer and the enhancement of the quality of life of people living for, with cancer. Our vision is to create a world where no Canadian fears cancer and these serve as our, our guidelines um, for our conduct and behaviour. An easy way to differentiate us from other cancer organisations is that we work and fund all types of cancer, so not just one type of cancer. We are community based. Um, the generosity of our donors enables us to do the work that we do and we don't provide treatment. Um, so we do rely on other charities and other organizations such as the BC Cancer Agency to fill in those gaps. And I can tell you the world of cancer is so large that often people think why is there so many different organizations, why can't you all just amalgamate? Um, there is enough work and different portfolios for each to do and we always make sure that we're not overlapping our work but we're more or less working together. So Get Screened. Um, Get Screened is a program that aims to increase colon, breast and cervical cancer screening rates amongst lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer communities in Hamilton, Ottawa and Toronto. The program was led by the Cancer Society and it was funded generously um, from a grant from the Public Health Agency of Canada. It was developed using a lay health educator model which some of you may be familiar with and the original model is called Screening Saves Lives. So a lay health educator model, it's well known and it's very effective. Um, it's a model in which individuals from the community are trained as ambassadors or peers to promote healthy behaviors in specific communities with specific issues. So in this case it was cancer, cancer screening. Um, and they'll connect with their family, friends and community to raise awareness about the importance of cancer screening and early detection. So the objectives of the program were to increase knowledge and awareness of cancer screening among under and never screened people in LGBTQ communities, specifically in Toronto, Ottawa and Hamilton. To identify and address gaps and barriers to screening in the population and to assess the implementation outcomes for the program and determine the next steps for a broader program all across Canada. So motivation for the program. You've heard Carolyn speak a little bit about stats and I'll go into that a little bit more. I think motivation for the program is the big why. So in 2011 when this program was developed, colorectal breast and cervical cancers accounted for over 34,000 cancer cases a year and over 9,000 deaths in Canada. I mean those aren't small numbers by any means. Um, what we do know is that regular screening for cancer is effective in both the prevention, prevention of cancer and detecting it in the early stages, therefore increasing the outcomes and the odds of a positive outcome. What we also know when it comes to screening and the LGBT community, not different from a lot of the other discussions that have happened over the, over the day, there's definitely a need for relevant and appropriate interventions to increase screening. Studies that are focused on screening confirmed that targeted, multifaceted, community-based initiatives using appropriate materials and delivered by members of the community in their own context are needed to create awareness and increase participation. 
What we also know with screening is that it is lower amongst LGBTQ. You have heard some excellent details from Dr. Gote already, um, and I'll reinforce that although the body of evidence that examines cancer screening is quite limited, many research do suggest that the LGBTQ population in Canada face significant barriers to achieving health because their needs are poorly understood and because healthcare institutions may not be inclusive or welcoming to them. Here's, here's what we also know. Participation in screen initiatives is lower than that of heterosexuals. We know that, uh, in particular, transgender bodies experience a range of behaviors when it comes to um, accessing screening. Some of these include a lack of provider knowledge and sensitivity, systemic barriers due to a health system that's organized in male and female categories only. And on that note, I checked in with every single thing that we have in our organization to make sure that we don't gender assign anything, and I'm really proud to say that we don't. Um, as well, trans individuals' gender dysphoria also arise when testing areas of the body that are traditionally gendered. And we know that few providers have had training in trans literacy and healthcare, and many trans people are un very unfortunately turned away from providers because of their lack of knowledge. So quickly, the program activities. Um, the main activities of the program was to develop a steering committee of health leaders to inform and advise about the project, to recruit the volunteer health ambassadors, so those with, that was the, the lay health educator model, um, from under and never screened communities, and it was the health um, ambassadors that possess the unique understanding of the community and, and know about the decisions that their peers are making. They worked in partnerships with advisory committees, community-based organizations, and researchers to identify and address barriers to cancer screening and share best practices. Once they were recruited, they were equipped and trained with cancer screening health and health promotion knowledge. Their outreach goals um, were planned with them, and they identified where and how they could share their screening messages with their friends, families, partners, and other members of their social networks. During this time, a social marketing and media plan to promote awareness was developed, it, and it was launched to complement the outreach that the health ambassadors were doing. So several options were considered for the campaign, um, and the movie element emerged that was the most popular, hence the Get Screened um, theme was born. This was very well received by the community, and all images contained photos of local LGBT community members, and no stock photos were used. Amen. I love when I see that. <laughs> A significant component of this project was outreach, training, and engagement with healthcare providers. So a physician webcast was, hel was held to educate and build capacity amongst GPs. A training module for breast cancer screening uh, program staff was developed along with training and attendance at many healthcare conferences to feature this program. The official launch occurred during Pride Toronto in July 2013 and Pride Ottawa in 2013, in August 2013. Um, at the events, a booth in the community fair sec uh, section was set up, kind of like a red carpet style, movie, st movie theater style, with a photo booth, and it was a very welcoming environment for the LGBTQ community to find out more, because this was very, very new for the community. Um, of course, as you all know, with any successful program, ongoing support and monitoring is needed and uh, as I would always say like the classic what seemed like a good idea in planning always translates into changing the course at times to improve the outcome and that most certainly did happen here too. So now what? So the major outcomes were found that the project was successful, it was well received, it opened doors, of course, everything always ends with emphasizing the need for more research. Um, but it gave the ability to cancer society uh, divisions across the country to adapt and adopt the model. It has an ongoing presence on social media and through its website. And it was also able to help increase awareness, decrease fear, increase confidence to speak to healthcare providers, increase participation in cancer screening, increase sensitization amongst knowledge amongst healthcare providers with inclusive practice and screening information and increased dialogue about screening and cancer among community members between healthcare providers. There is the link to um, the Facebook page and where you can find information on the website as well. So get screened, I mean, really, you'll see on the site, it just does focus on screening. You won't find a lot of that prevention information, but it's still, it's, uh, it's really good. It was created by the community, um, supported by the community, so lots of good things there. Okay, and now on to my work. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so for me, um, my, 
of always very proud work that I've been doing with gay men in BC. Um, in 2011, at the Canadian Cancer Society, men in general were identified as a priority to work with because what we do know is that more men are diagnosed and more men will die of cancer. Um, and as you heard from Dr. Gote in parts of my presentation so far, there are gaps in the community when it comes to cancer prevention, screening and engagement initiatives. <clears throat> so uh, it's definitely a personal passion of mine. Uh, my uncle did pass away when he was 40 of AIDS, but it was cancer that ultimately took his life. So I saw that gap and I knew it firsthand from the healthcare system and just everything that I saw. So as a true community developer, the way that I started this work was I went um, very grassroots. I wanted the gay community to tell me um, how they felt. I wanted to learn from them. So I started an environmental scan, which is kind of like a lay of the land, to find out and understand the community more. I began to set up meetings with all the stakeholders who were working in the gay male community, find out what their strategic priorities were, and what their pers perspectives and knowledge of cancer prevention among gay men were, and where there were opportunities to collaborate or possibly align our work. <clears throat> Partnerships. Oh, sorry, actually, let me go back. I forgot about that. So during the exercise of the environmental scan, what I was able to pull through, um, I hosted a gay men's health information session and I had over 30 uh, gay men come and participate. Um, it was just another learning um, experience for me. And then what I developed out of that was a gay men's health committee that I still have. So it's a volunteer committee of about six to 10 men who um, all sorts of different ages and professional backgrounds. But the men constantly tell me we need more young guys on the committee. So we're always looking for younger guys on the committee. That's exactly their word. Um, but they're amazing and have been going strong and steady for almost four years. Um, so partnerships. So partnerships are an extremely important part of the work that the Canadian Cancer Society does and especially for me with this work. Um, without partners I wouldn't have been able to achieve half of the work that I've been able to do. Um, and we're always looking to strengthen them and add value to initiatives that other organizations may already be working on. One thing that I have found that's very important with working with the gay community is being present. Um, really for the last few years that's what we have been focusing on is just being actually present in the community. Um, so attending the summit for the last four years which has led to me being in front of you right now. We've attended many of the gay sporting events providing resources and tools that, uh, that work for those events. Um, We've been at Pride, last year was our third year. We're now a member of the Loud Business Association, so I'm attending networking meetings and looking to work with those businesses more because we have a workplace wellness um, program that we offer for free. Thank you, that's wonderful. <clears throat> so if you've been to Pride, you may have seen our booth and float. Our theme is always Pride in Life. Our booth is booth 69. Get your mind out of the gutter because it's six cancers and nine tips. It's a, <clears throat> it's a very popular booth. I can tell you that there's lineups to get in. Um, <laughs> we keep it very light for Pride. Last year, the theme, as you know, for Vancouver Pride was royal, so we had, our, we had this lovely daffodil diva who was perched up on top of our float. She was a professional actress, Kathy Wilmot, actually, which is quite wonderful. Uh, we have very cheeky tank tops. Know your balls. <sighs> Check yourself, be aware, touch regularly, all of these things. We keep it light for pride. The issue of cancer is serious, but if you can generate a conversation from a tank top and that happens all the time, I'll wear something that says, I check myself, and somebody will ask me, like, what do you mean about that? It's all about knowing your body, looking for changes, etc. cetera. Uh, I, cr I consider that a success. <clears throat> So what are the next steps with my work? Um, gay men will continue to be the focus, looking to possibly work with other members of the community, continue with our excellent partnerships and develop them where we can. Um, I'm a big about listen, learn and lead, so listen to the community, learn from the community and lead where we can and need to be leading on specific issues. <clears throat> Uh, one thing, we spoke a lot about behavior change um, and Carolyn touched on a few things which were excellent about just making one small change and a campaign that we have is called My One Thing and it's about committing to something that you can slightly modify or change in your life to get a little bit healthier um, and there's always things to remember with changes is that a lot of people think that you have to make major changes. Small changes over the long run do lead to really big out outcomes. You have to believe in the process. Um, change takes time, you've got to be your own advocate and act as ambassador for your health. And so one of my favorite slides is to end is all the love. Um, 
two of our volunteers, but I'd like to end at how I started and thank you for welcoming me here again today. Um, and being here today wouldn't have been possible from all the support with the partners that we, en we engage. So thank you so much.